Redox reactions, otherwise known as oxidation-reduction reactions, involve the transfer of electrons. Redox reactions can be divided into two parts called half reactions. One half is called oxidation, and the other half is called reduction. The species that loses electrons is being oxidized. So we say that oxidation is loss of electrons, and the species that is being reduced will gain electrons. You can remember this with the mnemonic device oil rig. Oxidation is loss. Reduction is gain. The oxidized species is also known as the reducing agent since it forces the other species to reduce. The reduced species is also called the oxidizing agent because it forces the other species to oxidize. In order to determine whether or not a reaction is a redox reaction, we will need to look at the oxidation states of each element in the reaction. Let's look at the reaction of sodium metal plus chlorine gas to produce sodium chloride. To determine whether or not this is a redox reaction, we need to look at the oxidation states of each element in the reaction. Recall that the oxidation state of an atom in an elemental substance is zero, or in other words, the oxidation state of an atom in its free and uncombined form. So if sodium metal is in its elemental form, so its oxidation state is zero. Chlorine is also in its elemental form. Remember that it's a diatomic, so it has an oxidation state of zero. Now let's look at sodium chloride. We know that since sodium is in group 1A of the periodic table, its oxidation state is a plus one. And chlorine is a halogen in group 7A, and its oxidation state is minus one. Now that we have the oxidation states, let's look at how they change from reactants to products. Sodium on the left is zero, and on the right side, is plus one. We can see that this is a loss of electrons, and so this is oxidation. Chlorine goes from zero to minus one, and this is a gain of electron, and so this is reduction. So what can we say about this reaction? Yes, it is a redox reaction. Sodium is oxidized because it lost electrons during the reaction. Chlorine is reduced because it gains electrons during the reaction. Remember that we can also say that since sodium is oxidized, it's also called the reducing agent. And chlorine is reduced, so it is called the oxidizing agent. Okay, let's try some examples. We want to determine whether or not we have a redox reaction, and if we do, then let's identify the oxidized and reduced elements. Number one, tin plus HCl produces SNCl2 and H2. We start by determining the oxidation states for each element in the reaction. Tin is in its elemental form, so we know that its oxidation state will be zero. If we look at HCl, we know that Cl is a minus one, and hydrogen is a plus one. Let's move over to the SnCl2. We have chlorine is a minus one, but we have two of them. And so we have a total negative charge of minus 2. And in order to be neutral, 
the 10 must be plus 2, and H2 is a diatomic in its elemental form, and so we have an oxidation state of 0. Now let's see if we have any elements that change oxidation state from reactants to products. 10 on the reactant side is a 0, and on the product side is a plus 2. This is loss of electrons, and so it is our oxidation. Hydrogen on the left side is a plus 1, and on the right side is 0, and so that's gain of electrons, which makes hydrogen the reduction. And if we look at the chlorine, we see that chlorine goes from minus 1 on the left to minus 1 on the right. So there's no change in oxidation state there. So yes, we have a redox reaction because we have the transfer of electrons. And tin is oxidized. And hydrogen is reduced. Let's look at the reaction of barium chloride and potassium sulfate to produce barium sulfate and potassium chloride. Is this a redox reaction? Well, let's look at the oxidation states. We know that chlorine is a minus 1 from the periodic table with total amount of charge for the chlorine is minus 2, which makes our barium plus 2. If you remember, the sulfate ion has a minus 2 charge, and our potassium is plus 1, so that we get a plus 2. Sulfate again, minus 2, and barium, plus 2, chlorine, minus 1, and potassium, plus 1. Do we have a change in oxidation states from the reactants to the products? Well, let's look. Barium on the left is plus 2, and barium on the right is plus 2. So there's no change for barium. Chlorine is minus 1 on the left and minus 1 on the right. No change there. Potassium is plus 1 on the left and plus 1 on the right. And our sulfate ion still has the same charge, which would mean that the sulfur and the oxygen in that sulfate ion doesn't change. And so no change there. So what can we conclude? We can say that no, this is not a redox reaction. Now let's look at the reaction of zinc and iron 2+. Plus to produce zinc 2 plus and iron. Identifying all the oxidation states first, zinc is in, in its elemental form, so zinc is zero. Iron 2 plus is a monatomic ion. It already has a charge, so it's telling us what the, the oxidation state is, plus two. Same for zinc 2 plus. And iron is in its elemental form, and so it's zero. So let's look at the change in oxidation states from reactants to products. We have zinc on the left is zero. On the right becomes plus two. We can see that that's loss of electrons, so that's our oxidation. And iron on the left is plus 2, and on the right side is 0, and so we've gained electrons, which is reduction. So yes, this is a redox reaction because there is a transfer of electrons. Zinc is oxidized and iron is reduced. Let's go one step further and determine how many electrons are being transferred during this redox reaction we can see that each zinc loses two electrons and that each iron gains two electrons. Since we only have one of each, 
in the reaction, we can say that two electrons are being transferred during this reaction. Let's go back and take a look at number one. Can we determine how many electrons are being transferred here? Let's look at tin. Each tin will lose two electrons, but each hydrogen will gain one electron. Since we have two hydrogen in our reaction, that means we have each hydrogen gaining one for a total of two electrons being gained. So we have two lost by tin and two gained by all the hydrogen. And so we have two electrons being transferred in this redox reaction.